Hello, this is 5-6 in Signing Naturally, um, page 251. We're talking about sequencing activities here. And the main concept is that we're talking about more than one activity. We make a demarcation between the activities we're talking about so as to prevent confusion as you move from one activity to the other. In the example that's given on, well, they're talking about on 251, to sequence two, two separate activities, to use two different locations, be the non-dominant side, passive side to the dominant side. So talk about one activity here, then move on to the next activity with the demarcation sign, which is normally finished, or I've completed that. Um, make sure the verbs, um, the verb, verb agreements match. So, if I'm going somewhere, make sure that I talk, that I specifically state if I said something and it's up in space, if I'm talking over here and I'm going to go to, in the example on the next page, they're going to the vet. So I'm going to the vet. It's not over here. So I'm talking, everything's over here. <clears throat> Setting up things in space, picking up a dog, take drop, picking up the dog at the vet, and then after we finish that, she's saying, um... going to school to pick up her son. So we'll, I'll show you that. Um, and raising your eyes at the beginning of the transition, I'll show you that. Lowering your head at the end of the sign, show you that. So just, just to give you an example as to what she's saying on page 252, she is saying that first she's going to go to pick up her, go to the vet to pick up her dog. And then when she's finished that, she's going to school to pick up her son. So, that's it. May not be exactly what she signed there. She just signed pick up her son, pick up son, didn't say pick up my son. Again, to show you again. Okay. That's it. Easy. Body shift, moving in space, demarcation sign of finish, eyebrows raised, holding that sign just for a sec just for a microsecond and then moving on. I also wanted to point out that sometimes you may see people when they're talking about things and not per perhaps making that body shift, especially interpreters. Uh, we will do, do it kind of like this, not always, but if you're in, have in the, not a built, no ability to do the body shift, and there is always this ability to do, which is kind of like wiping the slate clean or moving on. I'm just a sign, it's like pushing a sign. It's almost like you are, the, what I just talked about, okay, that aside, this is what I'm gonna do next, or this is what I'm talking about next. That sign is that also used for moving on in topics. It's an example if you're giving a speech and you are talking about one topic after another, you're going from one topic to the next, making that very clear demarcation sign is that, okay, I finished talking about that topic, I'm moving on to the next. But more commonly, you'll see the finish sign, I've completed that, and the body shifting, which is always helpful. Like I said, um, ASL is a visual spatial language. Very much uh, people depend on your visual, the visual cues that you provide them to show them what's happening in the language. So, um, on page 252, also she gave the example of act of leaving to do something or going to do a specific thing. If you're going out to do something in general, to sign that, going out and going to do something specifically, I'm going there, wherever you set that up in space. Um, I did want to go through um, what they're talking about on 255 and 257, which is a little bit confusing, and I'm going to offer some clarification here. Um, they're calling it translating English questions with the do, to do 
verb. Um, uh, the sign for to do is literally this, to do something with your cupped hands like this, to do something. However, these are the examples when you are asking someone about, for example, in translation tip number one, they're asking, what did you do? Eyebrows lowered, the to do sign, or is there showing in the book with the two fingers? Uh, for example, he's saying tomorrow, your brother, what is he going to do? So asking what did you do or what did someone do, often using the to do sign. Going to the next page, 256, need to do. We've learned the sign before with for need or must, the crooked, the X hand like this. So, hmm. looks like he's saying need to go, perhaps, I don't know. Let me see, in the middle of the page. Okay. I guess he's saying, from what I can make out there, from the pictures, it says, your father needs to do what tomorrow? So we have the sign, tomorrow. Remember the sign for need, to do. Or where. Why he's using just one hand for go to, not sure. Translation tip three, going down the page. So anyway, going back to number two, need to. Remember that sign, need to. I need to go to school. I need to study. I need to cook. I need to sleep. Again, now on translation tip three, did you or have you done something? Or have you completed something? Here he's asking, did you clean the house? House, clean, finish? House, clean, clean, finish? Remember at the end? I don't think I did it the first time. House, clean, finish, did you? So... Remember the sign for completed, finished, done, so house, clean, finished, did you? Sometimes more emphatically, you may actually ask, the, ask it and make it a very clear question. It's clear anyway with your eyebrows being raised as a yes, no question. However, you can actually make it more emphatic by doing the question mark in space. So, Did you, question mark, or I'm asking you. Uh, use for anything like that. Um, did you finish studying? Um, did you finish taking the test? Um, did you finish sleeping? Are, are you done sleeping or awake? Going on to page 257, tip four. Um, do you? Asking if you like something. Uh, how do you feel? So here you would ask. Do you like sports? Sports. Here in the example is saying, do you like candy? You like candy. That's how you would gloss it. Translation tip number five, the act of doing something, like doing laundry, doing your homework. It's kind of like the infinitive of a verb. So here we have, he's showing in the example there, your clothes, when are you gonna, when are you gonna wash your clothes, basically? Now, when, when will you do the laundry?
you close laundry when is how you would gloss that. And like again, number of things. You homework when you homework. Homework is a, is a compound sign, home and work. I don't think we've learned that yet. Now you have. Okay. So I think that fairly well covers five, six. And next is five, seven.